These are healthy eucalypts by the roadside in southeast New South Wales, but travel on a bit further into the Monero Plains and the region's iconic manor gums are dead or not far off dying. It's a scene that spreads over a massive 2,000 square kilometres. Dr Chris Brack and PhD student Catherine Ross from the Australian National University say they've looked for all possible causes, but it remains a mystery. Why is there such large-scale dieback here? Why don't we have evidence of this sort of thing happening before? It's had fires, it's had heavy fires, light fires, it's had droughts, it's had rains, and they've survived that. So is it just an unusual combination? Is it just bad luck that's happening? Or is there a change happening? We haven't been able to, to come to a conclusive answer to that. We don't know. All we know is it's a very large area. So whatever it is, has to be very large scale to do it. So we think it's probably a combination of a whole range of things which have just built up the stress levels for the eucalypts. So people immediately say, oh, so it's climate change. It's an easy answer and probably the harsher, drier climate may have had an effect. If there was climate change, this is the sort of thing you would expect to happen. It's been suggested that one of the contributing causes is a lack of frequent low intensity burning. The region's Aboriginal custodians had for thousands of years used fire as a land management tool. That would be one of the contributing factors and it would be a big contributing factor because you know, back before Europeans, uh, the area was frequented by several, you know, by Aboriginal people all the time. Because the Monero Tablelands is subject to so much environmental change and extremes in weather, had we practiced our traditional land management tools, burning one of them, we would have had a different outcome. We do know fire in the Australian continent did to a large extent co-evolve. The fire itself can change the soil physical properties, changes the nutrient effects. You encourage some species and you discourage others. And we know the Aboriginals did use fire. So yes, certainly fire has a place. However, that being true doesn't mean that everything is being caused by different fire regimes. It may be a cause in some additional aspect, but it can't be the primary cause. Whatever the cause, Chris Brack says the challenge is what to do next. Now what? Is there anyone who's the obvious, oh, dieback, problems, ring, you know, 0900, whatever. It's just not there. This is what's happening to Australia. This may happen again. There are other examples where you have species on the limit of their, their natural range, and if we have an event that's caused stress, maybe other populations like this will disappear. Aileen Blackburn says that traditional knowledge needs to be a part of any future plan. Their perception of us was that we were just savages. And, and so how could we know? What would we know about land management? So there was that hurdle. Where is that starting to break down a bit now? The land has a soul and a spirit and we have to look after that too. It's fear it needs saving, you know. Let's get some soul back into the country and, and do that. Bill Brown, ABC News, Berrydale.